From an ultra-Orthodox Jewish community in Western Pennsylvania to sex work in New York City, Leah Vincent's, Leah Vincent's new memoir, Cut Me Loose, makes for a harrowing and gripping read. In terms of, you know, your, your upbringing, your childhood, how much of a role did your father play? You know, some people, uh, re, you know, refer to as daddy's girls. Would you say that you were a daddy's girl? I was, very much. But he was a very removed figure because he was very holy and he led a large congregation and we were raised to treat him with a great deal of respect. So I wanted more than anything to have his approval and his love, but unlike maybe some other daddy girls, there was like a definitely a, a distance between the two of us. You know, so you, you sort of mentioned in the book, you kind of chart your journey, really. Uh, and you kind of reference and you do these flashbacks of yourself as, a, you know, a younger girl and then sort of moving through the teenage years. Um, in terms of faith, when did you start questioning your upbringing, the surroundings, what you'd been brought up with? Uh, it really started happening when I was 14, but I wasn't questioning the core of the faith. I kept my faith in God in our way of life for a long, long time. I just started having questions on the edges, on like small things that sort of started to unravel the whole picture. Um, you know, when I was 14, 15, I started to question some of the racism that's really prevalent in, that was prevalent in my home, that seemed contrary to my concept of God. And then when I got a little bit older, I started thinking about what I wanted from my life and started wondering if perhaps there'd be a way to be a yeshivish Jew or at least a religious Jew that would let me go to college, that would let me have a different kind of womanhood than the one that had been planned for me. Oh, that's, I mean, that's interesting as well, this idea of the womanhood uh, that had been planned for you. Obviously, you know, your mother, you talk about your mother in the book, and she's sort of, a, you know, she kind of is a central figure in the household, at least. In terms of her as a woman, what kind of woman did you think your mother was? She liked to describe herself as an enabler. She thought of herself, her whole existence was about enabling her husband and her children to serve God and to live in the world. Um, which is really what our lives were as girls in my sect of the Yeshivish community. And uh, as I got older, I wasn't sure I was going to be satisfied with that anymore completely. I thought maybe I wanted a little bit more. But even the name Yeshivish comes from the Yeshiva, which is the study hall where men learn. I mean, it's defined by the work that the men do, and women really exist to support that. Your first sexual encounter has kind of a tinge of some darkness to it. Would you agree? Absolutely. Um, I don't talk about it this way in the book, but when I look back on it I, it, I was raped. I mean, I was in love with the man I was with, but I did not want to have sex with him. He knew that. I said no to him. And it was a very complicated thing for me to figure out, you know, without the tools for understanding what my permission was as a woman to say no to a man. And that's interesting. And you feel like that's, a, was that sort of a part and parcel of your upbringing, do you think, that idea of not being able to say no in, yes. in a fully way? Yeah, and, and having been told really explicitly that, yeah, that, yeah, I think I was really set up for not knowing how to navigate that kind of situation and, and believing that I had to say yes to men and not, yeah, not feeling a power to my own body and what I was allowed to what boundaries I was allowed to set. And do you feel that that was a fault of your mother or father or? Um, my parents, I think, failed in that regard. And I think it's also, it was part of this culture that I was raised in. I think when you have this obsessive focus on modesty, you, especially the way it was expressed in my community, you're really setting girls up to be disempowered. If you're raised that you have this raging sexual thing that can attract men, that you have to protect yourself and men from. It's a very distorted relationship to one's sexuality and very toxic, and I think it does girls a great disservice. Just sort of along the lines of communication, obviously, uh, you know, your parents, I, you know, I want to know if they've been in touch since you um, wrote the book, but also your brother, Morty, at the end of the book, there's this moment where it feels like he may, you know, he reached out and uh, potentially could have been cut away from the community himself. Have you had any communication with your family since this book has been released? Uh, not with most of them. Most of them are not talking to me. They've decided not to. But I have a great relationship with my brother. He's married now, has a child, and it's amazing after having lost so much to have a brother in my life again. And we have a wonderful relationship, and it's just an incredible thing.